Hey, this is Josh from Leak Dev, where we try to explain programming questions as simple and concise as we can. Today, we'll be talking about the lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. According to Leak Code, this question has been asked quite frequently by Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft. And just from my own personal experience, I was actually asked this question multiple times in screening interviews and actual on-site interviews. So being able to know how to work with trees will be a good thing to have in your tool set. Given a binary tree, we want to find the lowest common ancestor of the two given nodes in the tree. So what that basically means is, for example, if we were given p equals 5, which is right here, q equals 1, which is right here, we return 3 because 3 is the first common ancestor of 5 and 1. In example 2, we're given 5, which is right here, and 4, which is right here. The first common ancestor of them all is 5 itself, because according to the definition of the LCA, a node can be a descendant of itself. So we return 5 for example 2. And then finally in example 3, we have a tree. We don't have a picture of it, but we can imagine a tree of 1, 2, which probably just like this 3 and 1 right here. And then we would just return the answer 1, because 1 would be the root node. And once again, a node can be a descendant of itself. One thing to note is that there are several constraints to this problem. Specifically, the important one to know is that all node values are unique. The p value that we're given is not the same as our q value, and that p and q are guaranteed to exist in the tree. To solve this problem and all tree problems in general, we'll use a recursive solution where we will traverse through the whole tree and find our lowest common ancestor. So taking a step back and looking at this problem at the high level, intuitively, it's pretty simple. What we want to do is we will recurse our tree. We start from one, we go through its left child, see if it's one of the nodes that we're looking for. And if it's not, we go down, look at its left child. We find three and we know that it's one of the nodes that we're looking for. So we return some value back up say true, to our two, and then we recurse the right tree and see that it is also one of the value that we're looking for, q. And so we return something back up, so maybe another true in this example. And then once we're back at two and we finish recursing both its left child and its right child, we can see both of its childs and see that we have found our answer. And so we return Ideally, in the problem, we want the specific node, but in this example, let's say we return true. And then we go back to one, we recurse its right child and see five. Five isn't what we're looking for, so we look at the left node, which is null, so we return, let's say, false. And we also look at its right child, which also is null, so we also return false. So because we haven't found the nodes we're looking for in five, we return back false. And then once we go back up to our starting node at one, we, we looked at the left node and we see that we did find our ancestor. So we return some value back up and that would be how we would solve this algorithm. Of course, we can't just return true or false because this problem wants us to return the node that is our least common ancestor. So we want to somehow return to. In the previous example, we bubbled up a true or false value to indicate whether or not we found the nodes, and then we bubbled it back up to the top. Unfortunately, that won't work because in this specific problem, we want to re return the exact node itself that would give us the answer. However, we can modify our algorithm a bit. For example, instead of returning a true or false value, what if we return the node itself? For example, once we find the three node, we return that node back up. And once we find the four node, we return that node back up too. And then once we're at the least common ancestor and we identify that they are the, it is the least common ancestor, we can just return that node back up and eventually return that as an answer. To be able to accomplish this algorithm, I have a six step plan above. Now first, let's clean this up. Like all tree problems, we usually iterate through the tree using recursion. And when we need to do recursion, we need to define our base case and our recursive case. So what is our base case? We have two base cases. 
The first base case is when we reach a null node. That means we haven't found anything. When that happens, we just return null back up. The second base case is what happens if we find one of the descendant nodes, like three or four. When that happens, we return that node back up. And finally, we have a recursive case where we have an identified answer and we want to just continue iterating. There's two parts to this. First, we want to just continuously explore the left and the right subtree of the node that we are currently on. And then eventually we will hit those base cases that we talked about and we will return a node back up. So three and four. Now at two, while we're processing the left and right subtree, if both of them are true, we can just propagate the node to back up. Otherwise, if one of them is actually a value and not a null, we can just return that one. Otherwise, return null. So example, in five, we would return null because both of its subtree child is null. And then we return null back up here. And then finally, at one, we'll see that we have two and null. So we just return two, which would give us our answer. There is one specific case in this algorithm that I didn't address that it handles perfectly though. And that's what happens if we have a node that is a descendant of itself. So for example, if our value P equals two and Q equals four, how would this play out in our algorithm? Because we would actually never process four. So first let me clean this page up and then we'll do a quick run through. All right, so what happened here is we go to one and then we go to two and then two would be one of our base case. And then we just return it up. However, you might just wonder, well, didn't we just ignore four? How do we know if two is actually the ancestor? And the reason for that is because of one of the constraints in our problem, specifically that P and Q must exist. At this point, if we found one of our nodes and we return that up, that node already is guaranteed to be the common ancestor if we don't find any of the other nodes in the other subtree of its parents. So in this instance, we would return two back up and then everything will play out the same. We go to one, one would then go to its right subtree, which then would return null. And then finally back at one, we compare two and null and then return two because it's the only non-null value and we would have our least common ancestor. And that's roughly it, the idea of how this algorithm works. Let's get to the coding section. In recursion problem, I like to define a private helper function because usually you need to pass in different nodes. In this instance, it's all the same, but I'll create one anyways. So to reiterate, Q and P is the nodes that we're looking for and node is the current node that we are at. Remember, for all recursion problems, we need to define our base case and our recursive case. Our base case is either if we hit a null node, which means we haven't found anything, or if we found one of the nodes. And then when that happens, we just return the current node that we're at. Otherwise, in our recursive case, when we are iterating through our node, we have to go all the way to the left child to see if there's a common node, and the right child to see if that's a common node. And if both left and right is a common node, that means our current node is an ancestor. Otherwise, we just return the node back up. And that's all for this algorithm. Very straightforward to code, but not so easy to think about and actually implement. However, just like what we always do, let's walk through our problem. So first, we start with our helper function and we pass in basically everything we were given. So our current value node is one. One is not null, nor is it any of the descendants that we're looking for. So we enter a recursive case. To do that, we just explore our node that left and we just pass in P and Q. So that brings us to node two. Node two also does not hit the base case, so we enter a recursive case. We check our left node, which once again is now three. Now three actually is our base case. So we just return three back up. Back at two, our left is now three. But we're not done recursing yet. 
the next thing we need to do is we need to recurse through our right node. So we go to four and we find that four is one of our base cases. It's actually equal to Q. So we return four back up. So we're back at two and our left node is three and our right node is four. Now we are at line 21. If both the left and the right node is not null, that means we found the common ancestor and we can just return our node. We return two back up to our one node. So we exit our left recursive case. So in this instance, let me just erase everything. We are at two for our left node. Now we still need to explore our right node. So we go down there and we enter our recursive case here. Five is not null, nor is it any of our descendants. So we enter a recursive case. And just to reiterate where we are, I'll use blue to say this is a left and right value of our one node. And I'll use green to say this is the left and right value of our five node. So we're at five and we enter a recursive case. We go to left subtree, which is null, which is our base case, and then we turn null back up. So left is null. And then we do the same with our right subtree, which is also null. And because both of our nodes are null, we don't enter our if statement. And so we go do our else case. In this code, we said that if left is not equal to null, we return left. Otherwise, we return right. In this instance, because they're both null, it doesn't really matter, and we just return null back up. So null goes back up here, and we're back up here. And now in our one node, we have our calculated node right subtree value, which is null. And then we follow the same exact logic. Because both of them are not equal to something, we don't return the current node we're at. So instead we check if the left node or the is null. And then we want to check if one of our nodes is not null and then return that. In this instance, our left is not null. In fact, it's actually our ancestor. So we want to return that node back up. And so we just return two, which one will give us the answer to this question. Now let's submit our code this back up and there you go this is how you solve the least common ancestor problem the code itself once we look at it isn't horrible to write but once again this the thought process and reasoning involved to get to it it takes a quite a bit of a leap key to these tree prom is that we always want to explore all the nodes go to our base case or usually the bottom of our tree and then bubble our answers back up to the root node now, if you consider this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button and maybe even hitting the sub button to get notified whenever we make daily updates. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.